Um, what I'd like to demonstrate now is a model used by agricultural engineers for some years, in fact since the 1980s, to demonstrate agricultural tractor accidents. And this model was proposed by an engineer called Hunter from the Scottish Institute of Agricultural Engineers and was published in a peer-reviewed journal article and, and it, it's reasonably widely used. And it's got a number of key features. The first of which is there's a slope that can be interchanged for different surfaces. Second feature is there's a sliding scale along here measured in degrees 10, 20, 25, 30. For the purposes of this exercise, Mr. Harding's land was of the order of 20 degrees slope. Uh, in extremes of agriculture, we start going into 30, 35 degrees, and that's only found in forest specific. Uh, technical forestry environments. So that represents the features of the model. It also includes the ability to change the slope, in this case to make it shallower, 20 degrees, to represent different surfaces. The feature also that is used is one in 32 models. There isn't one that exactly is a representation of the foal tractor that was um, is the subject of this particular case. But for the purposes of demonstration, this is a typical four-wheel drive tractor. And when the tilt tests were conducted at Kinetic, the tractor was put on a slope very similar to this. And in that case, it was actually chained to the ground and the slope raised until the vehicle overturned. And so, in this particular case, you would raise the slope until you got to such a point that it would tip sideways like that. We refer to that as lateral instability. The other thing that was done in the tilt tests, and in this particular case, there were two types of longitudinal instability. One where it tips forward like that, tipping, and the other, when it's put in that orientation and the front wheels raised like that, rearing. So those are the different types of uh, instability that can be established from tilt table tests. One thing that was identified from HSE and research that the Scottish Institute conducted, and that is Actual tractor accidents occurred well, well below those limits of stability that were found under these perfect conditions on tilt table tests. In their research, the engineers identified a third form of failure, instability, called control loss. And control loss, as it, the name implies, is where the vehicle slides out of control. I've got a number of different models that I can use to demonstrate that. And if I start off at the relatively shallow angles here of about 20 degrees or even less, I can demonstrate what I need. This is a meant to represent a two-wheel drive tractor in that the rear two wheels are locked. It is very similar in how it's designed to the Shire tractor in that it has a floating front axle. The importance of that is when you find local obstacles, what it means is if you run over a slab or hit a trough, some hole of some sort, you still get four wheels in contact with the ground and it is a way of allowing the vehicle to be more stable against these local um, bumps, potholes, whatever. So if I demonstrate what in fact is, is meant by control loss, and we set the tractor up in that particular combination like that, and we're at the relatively low angle of 10 degrees. And if you watch what happens as I increase the slope,
slope somewhere there well well less than 20 degrees the vehicle starts to slide out of control if we were to do it again this is what happens 10 degrees and there it goes and that demonstrates also one of the features of control loss because as soon as you find any slight undulation and evenness in the ground the vehicle will automatically try to turn sideways and overturn so what actually happens is it loses control gathers speed subject to then even the most minor bump change in uh, slope it will then overturn laterally or sideways so the end effect is lateral but it starts off by one of these control losses so if we start off at 10 degrees and, and above 10 degrees it's, it's okay start to slide out of control and there it goes so if I do that again this time with it on the slight orientation like that we'll see what happens 10 degrees a little bit further and in that case if I can try it again it does have this tendency to lift one of the rear wheels first so try it again slide out of control and it's got this tendency to turn sideways the slightest unevenness causes it to turn sideways which can lead to this sideways or lateral overturn so we give it one last go As soon as we start hitting anything over about 20 degrees it speeds up very quickly but notice how it starts off very slowly so here we are about 18 degrees and that is the sort of slope that we found 18 percent well 18 degrees 30 percent which we found with mr harding's um on mr harding's land so if we do it again 10 degrees no problem as we start to go slightly up and we're approaching the sort of slope that we found on his premises we get this very slow build up of speed and eventually it will overturn so we'll have another go but the important point being to know is this occurs much much sh on much shallower slopes than might be given the impression from the tilt tests alone where in fact we were talking about 50 degrees in some instances for instability to occur. So what I'm saying is in practice this form of control loss occurs well below that that you'd expect to find if you looked at the tilt test alone. And this whole purpose of showing this is this form of loss, control loss, came through the research and identified actually a rather significant proportion of co the causes of agricultural tractor accidents. So, again, one last time. Yeah, there it were, and in this case, the back wheel starts to tilt. And the reason that it's able to do that is these two front wheels are on the ground, but because of the floating axle that I mentioned earlier, it allows one of the wheels to lift preference to the others. So <clears throat> that essentially is control loss. Now <clears throat> I have here an example of one of the ways in which we can make uh, vehicles more stable and that's to increase their uh, wheelbase. And so what you've got in this case is dual wheels. But in agricultural tractors when they're properly set up what you get is this sort of arrangement. So the wheels have been put on their maximum track, that between these two, and also notice in this case there's a rather considerable counterweight. So if I was to give you a demonstration of what that might look like in practice, here's one that is I've set up. We have a front loader in that case, it's in two wheel drive on this occasion, and for these purposes I put a counterweight at the back, like that. 
So there we are, 10 degrees. Too much of a problem. 20 degrees. And more. And there it is. 25 degrees before anything happens. So in this case, with a counterweight at the back, actually it is more stable than the vehicle on its own. And the reason is we've put in this case a rather substantial amount of weight on the rear driven wheels which, given it, which has given it better grip. So at 20 degrees it doesn't appear to be much of a problem. Slide it a little bit more, 25. Now this is well above what we found Mr. Harding's case, 25 degrees, and there it goes. So, actually, when properly set up, you can have a stable arrangement with a counterweight on the back, and that counterbalances the weight of this front end loader, and obviously we could put some weights in it to demonstrate it as well. So, my belief is that in this accident, the main cause really was, root cause was a control loss and a vital and important part, the cause of that is a lack of a counterweight. And as I just point out again, if you were to look at a properly set up loader, what you would find is the equivalent of that with counterweights on the rear. Um, so that ends my demonstration of what I think, or the simplest explanation, of why that we had a control loss in Mr Harding's case. It just reinforced the point that in fact we start off relatively slowly, and this ties in exactly with Mr Harding's statement of how things started quite slowly and then sped up. In this case though, We've got to go to 25 degrees before that occurred. If I take the uncounterbalanced example, again, two-wheel drive, no weight in the front, but of a similar setup, we just give the purpose of the demonstration, show it again. In this case, it starts off with 10 degrees. Yes, well, well be below that which we got previously, we get this control loss. There we are, about 18 degrees, properly counterbalanced, no, quite clearly there is a significant difference in that. So that I think and hope to have demonstrated the fact that counterbalancing is actually crucial in enabling the vehicle to become stable when properly used.